hello everyone and welcome back to the channel today uh, i am not here to post any bike videos and neither some travel stuff or anything else uh, we are all i mean uh, all the world is actually going through a deep crisis and that is called the coronavirus right so uh, we 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 need to stay indoors as uh, also instructed by the government of india me and my students we all are at our respective houses and uh, that's why study is also lagging behind you know so i thought that uh, let us get some idea um, to to uh, help my students to go on with their studies and that's why i have thought that i'll be posting certain videos on uh, our study stuffs uh, so that uh, me i mean my students they can run through the smooth uh, course of the study and today i thought uh, that you know they have in their syllabus uh, the castle of uh, otranto written by horace walpole uh, which is a gothic fiction and um, i thought that um, we can discuss certain things on gothic fiction uh, so that uh, they can get into the text very smoothly so let us start now uh, gothic fiction which is largely known by the subgenre of gothic horror is a genre or mode of literature and film that combines fiction and horror death at times romance its origin is basically attributed to the english author horace walpole with his 1764 novel the castle of otranto subtitled in its second edition a gothic story so as you see the castle of otranto this gothic story or gothic fiction it was the initi uh, initiation of uh, the tradition of gothic fiction and done by horace walpole which was published in 1760 now uh, as we all know that gothic fiction tends to place emphasis on both emotion and a pleasurable kind of terror serving as an extension of the romantic literary movement that was relatively new at the time that walpole's novel was published let me show you something if i can show you wait uh, yeah this book you can see this book uh, this one is uh, ugc nets at grf and uh, hiralal choudhury's book where it is uh, clearly mentioned like i can i can give you a picture of uh, this page where you can see that 1764 this time was already attributed to people like uh, you know henry fielding samuel richardson and uh, the the prior to samuel taylor coleridge robert southey and people like them so um, it was a time of a romanticism but uh, in this time horus walpole he did publish the castle of otranto uh, gothic fiction you know in the case of fiction it's a revival sort of thing and let's see next The most common of these pleasures among gothic readers was the sublime and indescribable feeling that takes us beyond ourselves. The literary genre originated in England in the second half of the 18th century where following Walpole it was further developed by Clara Reeve and Radcliffe, William Thomas Beckford and Matthew Lewis. These four I am going to you know repeat these four names Clara Reeve and Radcliffe William Thomas Beckford and Matthew Lewis so these four they are very important the genre had much success in the 19th century as witnessed in prose by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein let me show you i have the book Mary Shelley's Frankenstein one of the best uh, you know one of the best one of the best i have ever read and uh, this this is the this is the world view edition the world view edition this one Frankenstein it was also included in my MA uh, syllabus uh, while I was a student at Calcutta University so <coughs> uh, um so in the 19th century as witnessed in prose by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and the works of Edgar Allan Poe as well as Charles Dickens with his novella a christmas carol novella the term novella means a short novel a uh, small novel sorry um less less characters um and the plot is much easier than a novel 
and it's not tangled that much tangled you know novella um, and in the poetry in the work of uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge and Lord Byron so Coleridge had the elements in his poetry also and we will discuss about it later because Coleridge is much deeper than he sounds and uh, we, we are gonna also discuss about Biographia Literaria and his poems uh, in some other video. Um, in the work of Samuel Taylor Coleridge and Lord Byron. Another well-known novel in this genre, dating from the late Victorian era, is Bam Stoker's Dracula. So, if you haven't seen the movie Dracula, you know, I am I am such a person who has always connected uh, literature with movies and films. Uh, because while you read, only your eyes and your mind works. But while you see, watch a movie, your eye, your ear, your mind, everything works simultaneously together also. So uh, the effect is much deeper. Uh, please watch the movie Dracula. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. The name Gothic, which originally referred to the Goths. And uh, then, you know, I'll be talking about this later, this term, Gothic. Um, and then came to mean German, refers to the Gothic architecture of the medieval era of European history in which many of these stories take place. As you know, English literature has always been influenced by German literature or rather the German, not German literature, you know. Uh, England, as you know from old English literature, if you read the books of history of English literature by Albert or uh, Crompton Rickett or something else, there you can find that uh, the three Germanic or Southern Germanic tribes or Scandinavian tribes, the Angles, the Saxons and the Jews, they were invading England, uh, you know, they invaded England for, for many times. When England was not England, it was Britannia. And um, they did take over the country and they ruled the country for nearly 500, 600 years and they, they changed the path of literature. The uh, outcome is, uh, you know, Beowulf, have you, have you read it? Uh, I mean, you should uh, go through Beowulf. The story of Beowulf is so nice. It's a good example of the Scandinavian stories. Okay. So, <clears throat> this Germany and here also uh, the Goths. Uh, it's a German term, actually. Goths, uh, German term. In which many of these stories take place. This extreme form of romanticism was very popular throughout Europe, especially among English and German language writers and artists. The English Gothic novel also led to new novel types such as the German, uh, the, the, uh, there are two types actually. One is the German uh, Schauroman and the French Roman Neuer. These two types um, also like Gothic. These are variants of Gothic fiction or Gothic novels. And next is, now let me go back to this book. This one, uh, the Students of English literature are very fond of this book. So am I. Or uh, a glossary of literary terms by M. H. Abrams. M. H. Abrams. You know, I think my mirror reflection is on. That's why everything I can see is, uh, you know, can you see it straight? I don't think so. Okay, M. H. Abrams, a glossary of literary terms. Let us uh, read out from this book a bit. The word Gothic originally referred to the Goths, an early Germanic tribe, then came to signify Germanic, then medieval. Gothic architecture now denotes the medieval type of architecture characterized by the use of the high pointed arch and vault, flying buttresses and intricate recesses which spread through Western Europe between the 12th and 16th centuries. The Gothic novel, or in an alternative term, Gothic romance, is a type of prose fiction. It is a type of prose fiction which was inaugurated by Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto, a Gothic story. The subtitle, uh, the, the Gothic, a Gothic story, was added in the second edition. You know. 1764, the subtitle refers to its setting in the Middle Ages and flourished through the early 19th century. Some writers followed Walpole's example by setting their stories in the medieval period. Others set them in a Catholic country, especially Italy or Spain. The local was often a gloomy castle furnished with dungeons, subterranean passages and sliding panels. The typical story focused on the sufferings imposed on an innocent heroine by a cruel and lustful villain. 
and made bountiful use of ghosts, mysterious disappearances, and other sensational and supernatural occurrences. So, these are the characteristics of a Gothic fiction. Number one, that plot will be centered around a castle. You know, that, and that castle will be a medieval castle. Medieval means uh, attributed to the Middle Ages. And that castle will have a lot of dungeons, secret paths, sliding panels, and, you know, uh, there will be ghosts and supernatural machineries, darkness, a uh, lot of mysterious situations. The hero will be a, like, you know, a prince or something like that. A princess will be there, and there will be a villain who will have some magical powers, and uh, he will be attributed to the, attributed to the dark world. All these things happen in uh, gothic fiction and that is very common and that same thing uh, happens over here in the castle of Otranto. Okay, so let us see further. Many of them are now read mainly, um, okay, I, I've, I've missed something. The principal aim of such novels was to evoke chilling terror by exploiting mystery and a variety of horrors. Note this thing. The principal aim of such novels was to evoke chilling terror by exploiting mystery and a variety of horrors. Many of them are now read mainly as period pieces, but the best opened up to fiction, the realm of the irrational and the perverse impulses and nightmarish terrors that lie beneath the orderly surface of the civilized mind. Examples of Gothic novels are William Beckford's Vathek. It was published way back in 1786. The setting of which is both medieval and oriental and the subject both erotic and sadistic. Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho or Udolpho as you can say it was published in 1794. And other highly successful Gothic romances and Matthew Gregory Lewis's The Monk, it was published in 1796, which exploited which considerable, with considerable literary skill the shock effects of a narrative involving rape, incest, murder and diabolism. Jane Austen made a good-humoured fun of the more decorous instances of the Gothic vogue in Northanger Abbey. It was written in 1798 and it was published in 1818, 20 years later. Uh, you can notice the, you can, you can uh, actually highlight those years, 1794, 96, 98. We were actually stepping ahead to a very remarkable year that is 1798 when lyrical ballads was published as you know it was published by uh two of the greatest uh, you know poets one samuel taylor coleridge another is william wordsworth and as we know it changed the course of english poetry and um uh, if you read the poems of samuel taylor coleridge especially if you read uh, christabel if you read uh, rhyme of the ancient marina they are full of these mysteries these enchantments these uh, especially christabel is uh, filled up with all the essentials of a gothic fiction but it's a poetry so you can you can read that poem christabel the term gothic has also been extended to a type of fiction which lacks the exotic setting of the earlier romances but develops a brooding atmosphere of gloom and terror represents events that are uncanny or macabre or melodramatically violent. You know, note the term macabre, M-A-C-A-B-R-E. And often deals with aberrant psychological states. In this extended sense, the term gothic has been applied to William Godwin's Celeb Williams in 1794, Mary Shelley's remarkable and most influential Frankenstein, which was way back, which was published in 1817, Frankenstein, you should read this novel, Frankenstein, I again can show you the cover picture of the book, this one, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, it's not a huge novel, if you, if you buy this uh, worldview edition, you will find a lot of, uh, you know, stuffs in the, uh, you know, you can find stuff called Gothic and Romanticism, uh, by David Punter and you can find this article over here it's very important 
and uh, so you should read this one. You can find The Vampire, A Tale by Dr. John William Polidry and The Mortal Immortal by Mary Shelley. Uh, it's a shorter fiction actually. You can find it in this book. So please, please, if you can get hold of this book, please do it. Uh, you can also get this book from your libraries or uh, you can buy a second-hand book also. Why not? I mean, uh, second-hand, first-hand, doesn't matter. Book is a book. It gives you a lot of knowledge. You can also find the text as a PDF format, I guess, on, you know, Google. You can, you can find and Play Store also. I'm not sure. I'll have to check it myself if, if it is available over there. Okay. Next, let me talk about one second. Now, let us go further. The novel usually regarded as the first Gothic novel is uh, The Castle of Otranto by English author Horace Walpole, which was first published in 1764, as I told you earlier. I always mention the dates because, you know, I think uh, that if you relate the history of English literature along with the dates with whatever text or whatever author you are reading, then uh, it's very easy to cope up with uh, the, the, uh, the genres, you know, the uh, chain of history of English literature. You should know everything, especially the dates, especially. Walpole's declared aim was to combine elements of the medieval romance, which he deemed too fanciful, and the modern novel, which he considered to be too confined to strict realism. The basic plot created many other simple gothic genre traits, including threatening mysteries and ancestral curses, as well as countless trappings such as hidden passages and often fainting heroines, as I told you earlier. Now, Walpole, he published the first edition disguised as a medieval romance from Italy, discovered and republished by a fictitious uh, translator. Now, when uh, Walpole admitted to his authorship in the second edition, its originally favorable reception by literary reviewers changed into rejection. So, it was rejected. The reviewers' rejection reflected a larger cultural bias the romance was usually held in contempt by the educated as a tawdry and debased kind of writing. So the term romance, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, a matter of hatred in the eyes of the reviewers or in the eyes of the critics. Uh, uh, writing something romantic was something of a bad thing, you know, uh, it was it was heavily criticized. And so was this person's writing and it was even been rejected. Uh, the genre had, <coughs> extremely sorry, the genre had gained some respectability only through the works of Samuel Richardson and Henry Fielding, a romance with superstitious elements and moreover void of didactical intention was considered a setback and not acceptable at all. Walpole's forgery, together with a blend of history and fiction, contravened the principles of the Enlightenment and associated the Gothic novel with fake documentation. So this is, uh, this can be considered for uh, wrapping up today. This is the introduction of this novel, uh, The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole, 1764. Please do remember that. And I told many things about Gothic fiction. If you have any queries about this, whatever I told in this video, if you have any queries, if you want to ask me any questions, please go to the comment section and do comment over there. And uh, do share this video to, with your friends uh, so that they can also sit back at home and they can also know certain things, read about certain things. And... Uh, Please watch the movie Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, as I said. You can also uh, watch, uh, read this book, Frankenstein. You can also watch the movie Frankenstein. It is also available. Not uh, I, Frankenstein, but the earlier version of Frankenstein. You, know. you should watch the movie. And another uh, social message for my students, as well as all the viewers who are watching this video. Please do stay indoors. Let the doctors help us. Let the administration, let this... Uh, let let the government help us, be it central, be it state. They are trying to help all the people. If you do not stay indoors, uh, if you go out to roam uh, in the roads and stroll about, uh, chit-chats with your friends over there, 
it will be a huge problem. Let not this disease be spread commun communally, uh, you know, community wise in the society. So if we want to check this disease called Corona virus, we need to stay indoors and let the government, let the society fight with it in its own way. Let the doctors, let the uh, administration, let the government fight with it. And uh, please don't, please, uh, like for the first time in history, I think it, it, there was a proverb, united we stand, divided we fall. But here we need to be divided, united we fall, <laughs> divided we stand. So please stay indoors, uh, enjoy your holidays in your own way, try to learn a lot, try to be there uh, and try to study a lot at your home so that when the college reopens, you're able to go and sit for the exams directly. You don't need to lag behind, study a lot. Uh, that was all for today. Signing off. Bye.